Have you ever wondered how fast the universe is expanding? And why does it matter? Well, this is one of the most important and challenging questions in cosmology, the study of the origin and evolution of the universe. The expansion rate of the universe is also known as the Hubble constant, named after the astronomer Edwin Hubble, who first discovered that the universe is expanding in 1929. It tells us how fast the space between galaxies is stretching and it also determines the age and size of the universe, as well as its fate and history. But there is a problem. Different methods of measuring the Hubble constant give different results, and this discrepancy may require some new physics to explain it. In this video, we will explore the latest study that used the Hubble Space Telescope to measure the Hubble constant and how it differs from the predictions of the standard cosmological model. We will also discuss some of the possible implications and solutions for this mystery, such as the nature of dark energy, dark matter, and dark radiation, and the need to revise our understanding of the universe. So, stay tuned and get ready to learn more about the Hubble constant problem. How do we measure the Hubble constant? Well, one of the methods is to use the distance ladder, which is a series of steps that allow us to measure the distances to objects in the universe. The first step is to use objects that have a known brightness, called standard candles, to calibrate the distance ladder. One of these standard candles are Cepheid variable stars, which are stars that pulsate with a regular period that depends on their brightness. The longer the period, the brighter the star. By measuring the period and the apparent brightness of a Cepheid, we can calculate its distance. Another type of standard candle are type 1 A supernovas, which are the explosions of white dwarf stars that have a similar brightness. By measuring the apparent brightness of a supernova, we can also calculate its distance. The second step is to use these distances to measure the velocities of galaxies by using the Doppler effect, which is the change in the wavelength of light due to the motion of the source. The faster the galaxy is moving away from us, the more its light is shifted to the red end of the spectrum. The third step is to plot the distances and velocities of galaxies on a graph, called the Hubble diagram, and find the slope of the line that best fits the data. This slope is the Hubble constant, which tells us how fast the universe is expanding. The latest study that used this method was led by a team of astronomers from the SHOES, or Supernova H0 for the Equation of State project, which used the Hubble Space Telescope to measure the distances to Cepheid variable stars and Type 1a supernovas in different galaxies. The study used the most precise and accurate data available and found that the Hubble constant is about 73.2 kilometers per second per megaparsec, which means that for every 3.26 million light years of distance, the universe is expanding by 73.2 kilometers per second. This result is consistent with previous measurements by the same team, and it is also the highest value of the Hubble constant ever measured. But there is a catch. This value does not agree with the value predicted by another method, which uses the cosmic microwave background. And this is where the tension arises. The cosmic microwave background, or CMB, is the oldest light in the universe, which was emitted about 380,000 years after the Big Bang, when the universe became transparent for the first time. The CMB is a snapshot of the early universe, and it contains a wealth of information about its properties and parameters, such as its density, composition, curvature, and expansion rate. By analyzing the tiny fluctuations in the temperature and polarization of the CMB, we can infer the values of these parameters and test the standard cosmological model, which is the best theory we have to describe the universe. The standard cosmological model assumes that the universe is made of ordinary matter, dark matter, and dark energy, and that it is flat, homogeneous, and isotropic. It also assumes that the universe is governed by general relativity, which is the theory of gravity proposed by Albert Einstein. One of the missions that measured the CMB with high precision was the Planck satellite, which was launched by the European Space Agency in 2009 and operated until 2013. The Planck satellite mapped the CMB over the entire sky and produced the most detailed and accurate picture of the early universe ever. 
By using this data, we can calculate the value of the Hubble constant predicted by the standard cosmological model and compare it with the value measured by the distance ladder. And here is the surprise. The two values do not match. The value predicted by the Planck satellite is about 67.4 kilometers per second per megaparsec, which is about 8% lower than the value measured by the SHOES team. This difference is not a small error, but a significant discrepancy that cannot be explained by the uncertainties in the measurements. This discrepancy suggests that there is something missing or wrong with our understanding of the universe, and that we may need some new physics to resolve it. So, what are the possible implications and solutions for the discrepancy between the two measurements of the Hubble constant? Well, one of the possibilities is that the standard cosmological model is incomplete or incorrect, and that we need to modify or replace it with a more general or alternative model. For example, we may need to change the properties of dark energy, which is the mysterious force that is causing the accelerated expansion of the universe. Dark energy is usually assumed to be a constant called the cosmological constant, but it could also be a dynamic or interacting entity, such as a scalar field or a fluid. Another possibility is that we need to add extra components of dark matter or dark radiation, which are the invisible forms of matter and energy that make up most of the universe. Dark matter is usually assumed to be cold and collisionless, but it could also be warm, self-interacting, or have some interactions with dark energy or ordinary matter. Dark radiation is usually assumed to be composed of photons and neutrinos, but it could also include other particles, such as axions or sterile neutrinos. These modifications or additions could affect the expansion and evolution of the universe and bring the two measurements of the Hubble constant closer together. However, these possibilities are not without challenges and limitations. For one thing, they lack direct observational evidence and they may require some fine-tuning or ad hoc assumptions to fit the data. For another thing, they may violate some of the established principles or symmetries of physics, such as the equivalence principle, the conservation of energy, or the isotropy of the universe. Moreover, they may create new problems or tensions with other observations or tests, such as the gravitational lensing of distant galaxies, the abundance of elements in the universe, or the gravitational waves from merging black holes. Therefore, these possibilities are not very satisfying or convincing, and they may not be the ultimate solution for the Hubble constant problem. In conclusion, we have learned that the Hubble constant problem is one of the most intriguing and perplexing mysteries in cosmology, and that it may reveal some new physics beyond the standard cosmological model. We have explored the latest study that used the Hubble Space Telescope to measure the Hubble constant and how it differs from the prediction of the Planck satellite. We have also discussed some of the possible implications and solutions for this discrepancy, such as the nature of dark energy, dark matter, and dark radiation, and the need to revise our understanding of the universe. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new and exciting. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more videos on the wonders of the universe.